Hi everybody, in this video, we're gonna learn all about how to handle events for multiple elements. Now here's why it's important. Oftentimes when you're building your UIs, you're gonna have a lot of UI elements, each that's gonna be dealing with some kind of an event, a click event, a keyboard event, a progress event, just any of the events you're normally dealing with. Now as your apps get more complex and your UIs get more complex, the more UI elements you have, the more event listeners you have, which just tends to be one of the areas of performance bottlenecks. And what we're gonna do in this video is learn about how to avoid that so that you might have other performance related problems with your app, but it won't be because you have many event listeners that are kind of causing, causing things to go haywire. So at a high level, event handling takes three parts. You have the UI element you care about, you have the event listener code, then you have the event handler. And what really happens is this, when an event happens, your event handler is notified and that notification is done by the event listener that helps kind of tie your UI element, the event you're listening for, and what to call the event handler as a result of it. So now let's take a, a larger view. Let's say we have a lot of UI elements. If you have a lot of UI elements, what happens is this. In a very traditional, naive approach, you're gonna have a lot of event listeners for every UI element, then call an event handler. Could be the same event handler, could be multiple event handlers, but the, the bottleneck here is the event listener part. A lot of event listeners, the more you have them, the more your performance is gonna be poor because they each take up some non-trivial amount of memory and because events can be listened to and reacted to at arbitrary times of your app's lifetime, you, you're gonna have them running in memory all the time, which is part of the reason why this is a, a bad idea. So our solution is this. Instead of having many event listeners for every UI element that we're dealing with, we're gonna have one event listener instead. And that event listener will be tied to an event handler. And the event handler will now contain the logic to determine which particular element fired the event. So instead of having that be delegated across many event listeners and possibly many event handlers, we're gonna have everything simplified down to one event listener and one event handler. And so here's how it's gonna work. Let's first take a look at an example. And so for the example, let me go to Chrome. Okay, so here we have five buttons, one, two, three, four, five. And for each button I click, you're gonna see a little dialogue that says, hello, in this case, hello one, hello two. Basically, you get the picture. Each dialogue is gonna be tied to the element that I'm currently clicking on. And so the way this page works is kind of like this. I'll first look at the document because it's kind of important to understand. We have our five buttons here, ID one, two, three, four, five, and they share a common parent, in which case a div element whose ID value is the dude. We also have some style rules here, but they aren't really that important. All they do is just help make sure example looks the way it looks. So let's go look at our code right now. So the approach I'm using right now is a very typical approach that involves multiple event listeners. So you have me referencing all the various DOM elements and then me calling add event listener on every one of the elements and then having one event handler called do something that deals with displaying the words hello and then the ID value of the element that I clicked on. Now here's the problem though. I have five elements and then I have five event listeners, which kinda kinda is the, the inefficient part that we kinda talked about that we want to avoid. And the solution we're gonna employ is this. So this, there's a lot going on here, but here's what's happening. Instead of having an event listener for every element, we're gonna listen to the events on the common parent that these elements have, which for a simple example like this, is the dude element. If you recall, all events tend to bubble and tunnel. So instead of every event you're gonna you fire, ends up starting off at the root of your document, finding its way all the way down to the element that actually fired it, and then going all the way back up again. Which often means that there's a lot of traversal going on, which sounds kind of inefficient, but we can use that inefficiency to our advantage in this case by instead of listening for the event on each element, we listen to it on the parent as the event is traveling back up the, up the tree. And another optimization we're gonna do is this. Once we've listened to our element, we don't want it to travel you know, back up to the root of our document. We'll actually stop the event from going further. We'll actually kill the event right after it hits the dude element, which is what we're gonna be listening for all the events on. So this might be a little confusing, but let's look at the code and let's walk back through how it all worked. And that might help make more sense of whatever is happening. And so first of all, here's our example, nothing crazy going on here. And so let's go to code. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna keep the code as is, but what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> instead of having an event, instead of referencing all of these elements, I'm just gonna listen to the dude element instead. So I'm gonna go back to my JS file. Let me actually delete everything you see here. 
I'm going to type in an element var the parent, and it's going to be document dot query selector, and it's going to be hashtag the dude. We're going to now have a reference to the dude element directly in the parent, and then I'm going to add one event listener, the parent dot add event listener. It's going to be click, and let's call it do something event handler again. I guess I shouldn't have deleted it, but it's not a lot of code, so we'll deal with that in a second. All right, so all I need to do now is define the do something event handler that's going to handle these various clicks. So function do something, add the argument for e, and then we are in good shape. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is this. We need to figure out what element was actually clicked on. And that information is actually stored by the event argument, in which case I'm referencing by e right here. So I'm going to do if e.target, which is the element that we clicked on, does not equal equal um, e dot current target. This is an optimization to make sure that I'm, I'm not actually registering a click on the on our the parent element itself. Now we can do some interesting things. Var clicked item equals e dot target dot id. Now what this does is it gets an id of the clicked element, which in this case will be the button because we're filtering out any clicks that are originating from the dude element itself. And from there, we just do a usual code alert, hello, plus clicked item. And also one of the things we talked about earlier is that we don't want to have our event propagate beyond this. So do e.stop propagation, if I can spell it correctly, e.stop propagation. And that's it. I think this looks good. You know, some of the color coding isn't right, so there might be something wrong here, but we'll get there in a, in a few moments. But let's go back to our example. Let's refresh the page and let's click on these buttons. Okay, it still works. You have hello one, hello two, and all of the examples work just the same. And so let's look back at the let's look back at our slide and what we were talking about here. So we have one event listener listening to the dude element, and then our dude element event handler happens to the do something event handler, sorry, happens to deal with which of the various elements was actually clicked and we stop the propagation from going beyond where it is. And you can see how that maps to in our code right here, where all we're really doing is replacing all of the event listener calls with just using e.target.id and listening to the clicked item in a more efficient way. So that's really all you have it here. And here's some more visualization of how that works where we, it's a different view of the exact same thing we we talked about. So that's really all there is to handling events from multiple elements. Now, the main thing to keep in mind, there's several things to keep in mind. One thing is this. This works best when you have a common parent element that you can rely on for dealing with all the event handling. If you happen to have a more <clears throat> complex layout where you have UI elements all across the page with a variety of different parents, that might be, a, you know, one optimization would be for you to figure out a way to group all of your UI elements that have event listening on them into a common parent. And this idea of having one event listener and one event handler for many elements is actually nothing new. For example, if you use React, the React library, by default, any event handling you do, whether you specify it explicitly or not, all of it happens to go through one global event handler that happens to deal with all the eventing for the entire application. That's one extreme form of optimizing for this, which is, uh, you know, one way of doing it, which I only recommend if you're using the React library because keeping track of all of them on your own is, it's kind of a hassle. And the other part is you don't want to do this all the time. If you only have, in this case, like one or two elements, adding that level of event listening logic to a parent element might be overkill. You know, I always, one of the things I always mention is that when you're writing code, code readability and simplicity is often a very important thing, especially if you don't have any performance problems that you're trying to deal with. You know, over-optimizing for performance and complementary code might be one of those things that may in the long run be a, a negative overall. So keep that in mind, you know, it's all about trade-offs really. So with that, if you have any questions, go to crib.com or post in the forums at forum.crib.com. You can find me on Twitter, you can find me on Facebook, on YouTube, just pretty much anywhere where there's a Krupa to be found, you'll probably find me or the many other people who happen to have my same first name. So be sure to avoid that part. And of course, there's a book called JavaScript Absolute Beginner's Guide. It covers a lot of topics like this and more that is actually really beneficial, if, especially if you're trying to learn JavaScript and get a good idea of the fundamentals. Hit subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And of course, again, buy a book. It is uh, it's a good thing. Kills trees. I'm just kidding. Trees are good. Bye.